Hey there, I'm Lee Brad Lloyd, and today I'm going to tell you if I think you should spend your hard-earned money on the Maris Air Purifier that works with Apple HomeKit. There are a lot of Maris fans out there, and I'm one of them. There's only so many companies that are willing to go through the effort and cost for HomeKit certification. And yes, Maris is one of them, so right away, respect. But just because a company makes products that support HomeKit doesn't mean they're good. <coughs> Wimo. I would say that Maris is top of the line, but they are solid value-wise and they outperform their cost. So the biggest feedback I get when it comes to Maris is, why Wi-Fi? I'm only willing to buy Thread products. Or frustration that their products only work using 2.4 gigahertz instead of 5 gigahertz, which has less range. 5 gigahertz, sure, that's nice, but it really doesn't concern me. Thread, on the other hand, yes, that matters. And perhaps one day we'll see Maris take the leap, but I'm guessing if Maris were to convert their products from Wi-Fi to Thread right now, it would also come with a price increase. In terms of Matter, Maris has said that they're working on Matter certification. So take that for what you will, but Wi-Fi will be supported by Matter at least at some point. Hopefully Matter gets here soon so we can learn a little bit more about what it's actually going to look like. I'm not holding out for Matter though, it could be easily delayed again, and as long as your products work with HomeKit, they should work for years to come. My point is, Maris makes some really nice, affordable HomeKit products that fit nicely on the HomeKit shelf. In terms of Wi-Fi, I often find it can be finicky in my experience, though my Maris products have been solid and responsive, at least for the most part. One of my favorite Maris products is their light switch with remote. It's like a third of the cost of Lutron Caseta, and I can't recall a single time that it's failed to respond. I did a video on this so you can check it out later. Basically, I installed this to control my shower light and I added the remote right outside my shower, which you could never do by code if it was a wired switch. I then have the switch turn my exhaust fan on for an hour at the same time. Such a simple automation, but one that's really made my life more efficient. But we're not here to talk about the Maris light switch. Today, it's all about the Maris air purifier. I've had this in use for a few weeks now and I'm excited to tell you all about it. To be upfront, this is the first air purifier that I've ever owned, so this was as new for me as I'm sure it may be for many of you. I've always wanted an air purifier though, and I knew once I got one, it had to be HomeKit. First of all, I have seasonal allergies, which gets really bad this time of year. For me, June is by far the worst month of the year. Secondly, since starting my YouTube channel, I've had the privilege to test some really good air quality monitors. It's great to know more about the air that you're breathing, but when there are air quality issues, what do you do? Hopefully this video will help. This isn't the only HomeKit air purifier on the market, so let's talk about what you get, how it works, including some testing that I did, and of course, I'll talk about some automations that I've set up. I'll also go over any drawbacks and hopefully help you decide if the Maris air purifier is right for you. This air purifier is designed to eliminate toxins, smoke, pet dander, hair, pollen, and odors. No one wants this stuff in the air, but if you happen to be an allergy sufferer like me, or have someone in the household who has asthma or another condition, then it's especially appealing. Who wouldn't want the cleanest air possible? So how does this work? The Maris air purifier uses a three-stage HEPA filter. First is the pre-filter, which catches large particles like dust and hair. Next is the HEPA filter that Maris claims catches 99.97% of particles at 0.3 micrograms, including smoke, pollen, and pet dander. These days, we're more aware of viruses in the air with COVID. When used properly, HEPA filters can remove airborne contaminants such as bacteria and viruses, but consider this only applies to the air that circulates through the filter. It won't be able to remove it from the entire room. I want to mention this as it could be an extra tool to help, and I'll link a helpful article from the New York Times wire cutter in the description. The final layer is the carbon filter, which removes odors, including cooking smells and other toxic substances like VOCs. Not all air purifiers include a carbon filter, which is needed to eliminate VOCs. I talk about this in my Eve Room video, which uses VOCs to measure air quality. Maris also claims their air purifier is ultra quiet, as low as 24 decibels during sleep mode. And of course, I'll give you my feedback on this shortly. A big plus for this air purifier, it's smart. It has HomeKit compatibility, Though those using Google and Alexa, it'll work for you as well. HomeKit compatibility means that now you can create schedules, utilize scenes and automations, and control the air purifier using Siri. I decided to install this in our master bedroom since this is where we spend a third of our time sleeping. This room is about 225 square feet, which is actually slightly larger than the advertised 207 square feet of coverage area, but it's pretty close. 
Size-wise, it's 15.4 inches tall and 7.1 inches wide, and I placed it on my dresser, at least for now. It has a white metal casing, which I think looks nice. You can see there are holes along the outside, which is great because you can place it anywhere without blocking the air intake. The only thing I needed to do to set this up was really just remove the plastic, including around the filter, and then plug it in. Adding the HomeKit was simple and only took a couple of minutes. Maris does recommend that your phone is on the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi band when adding to HomeKit, though I personally never had any issues on 5 or 6 GHz. Measuring air quality can be tricky. I mean, how can you actually tell if a purifier is working? How do you know if you're breathing in less toxins? Those are tough questions to answer, though luckily there are some ways to measure the effectiveness. When looking at my eRoom data, I can see that my air quality spikes on May 14th at 476 parts per billion. Since installing on May 21st, the highest day was just 188 parts per billion. I also have the Qingping Air Quality Monitor Lite, which is another HomeKit compatible air quality sensor. Unlike eRoom, it doesn't measure VOCs, though I like it because it measures PM 2.5 and PM 10, which refers to the size of the particulate matter in the air. Just scrolling through the month, I can clearly see that my air quality is better after installing the air purifier. Of course, keep in mind that I haven't had the air purifier on every single minute since installing and certainly not on high. There have been periods over the last month where we've had the windows open or been using cleaning products nearby, so these are all things that can impact the result. Ultimately, I think it's hard to know and in some ways we're just trusting the manufacturer claims. I will say that my allergies have been much better so far this year. I feel it would be irresponsible to say I know for sure that this is a direct result of using an air purifier. Environmental conditions or even the effectiveness of my allergy medicine can all play a part in that. Still, it seems to be helping and had they been worse or even the same as I remember from past years then, I may question the effectiveness of using an air purifier with allergies. I did want to test this out to capture more than just how I feel, so I decided to do a quick experiment to see how long it would take to remove toxins from the air using the air purifier compared to just normal conditions. Keep in mind, I didn't perform this test in a sterile lab with expensive tools and instruments. Instead, I've got the Maris air purifier, Eve room, and a can of hairspray. With the air purifier off, I sprayed the room for about three seconds and I waited for the air quality to drop, which didn't take long. Within a few minutes, the air quality had dropped to two stars, as low as 425 parts per billion. Five minutes later, it was back to four stars and then back to five stars within 15 minutes. I then ran the same test, but with the air purifier on high and I was surprised with the results. I waited for the air quality to drop below five stars, but it never happened. You can see there was a small increase in VOC levels, but not enough to be less than excellent. I expected the air quality to improve faster than without the air purifier on, but I didn't expect to work so quickly with little to no effect on air quality. I retested this the next day and I got the exact same result. So from my minimally scientific test, it was enough to convince me that, yeah, it's actually doing something. There is some maintenance required to ensure the filter is working as intended. Maris recommends you replace the filter every three to six months. This would depend on how often and what speed you're using it at, and of course how much dust and pollutants may be in your air. Maris shows you your filter life in the Maris app to make this really easy. Replacement filters are available for a reasonable cost, so it's always good to have an extra one on hand. They cost about $25 US and the links will be in the description. There are many ways to control this device, so let's start in the Maris app. It's always a good idea to download the app to make sure you have the latest firmware installed. I actually really like how Maris set this up. Right away, you get this really nice image of the air purifier taking in all the dust and pollutants and releasing clean, fresh air, which is really appealing. Maris has a good app. I like the simplicity with the four icons along the bottom. You've got the power button to the left, then speed where you can choose between low, medium, and high. Then there's sleep mode, which reduces the fan speed even further. And lastly are the child locks if you're worried about children messing with the buttons. There are even more settings by clicking the hamburger menu in the top right, where you can turn the LED light and beep noise off. You can also go to the user manual and see your Wi-Fi signal strength. You can create scenes and automations within the Maris app, though I prefer to do this in the home app. Let's take a look at that now. The Maris air purifier will show up in the room where it's been installed, and when you long press it, you have the option to turn it on or off and adjust the fan speed. It's not labeled, which makes it a little confusing, but 25% is your sleep mode, 50% is low, 75% is medium, and 100% of course is high. You can also see your filter life from here as well as activate the child lock. 
One of the considerations with an air purifier is how loud it is. It makes sense that to pull the maximum amount of air, it's going to make some noise. Luckily, there are some different settings to help you avoid noise keeping you up at night, assuming you choose to install this in a bedroom like I did. Sound can sometimes be hard to properly demonstrate over video, but here's my best try. I love that there's a sleep mode. It's honestly so quiet, I don't even know it's on. Even low speed is pretty quiet, and I've used this at night and I was able to sleep just fine, though I could hear it. So let me tell you about some of the automations that I've set up. It doesn't make sense to have this at 100% all day when nobody's in the room. Instead, I have an automation that turns this on low at 9 a.m. every morning. This is actually part of the same automation that turns off my Hunter ceiling fan in the morning. At 8 p.m. from Sunday to Thursday, I have an automation that turns my air purifier to 100%. This is about an hour before we go upstairs to bed. This gives the air purifier time to work a little bit harder to clean the air before it's time to sleep. I do the same thing on Fridays and Saturdays, though since we're night owls, I start the automation at 11.45 p.m. We typically watch a show to wind down before falling asleep. I activate my bedroom TV scene with a nearby flick button, which turns off my overhead lights, dims my accent lights, and turns my air purifier to low or 50%. When it's time to sleep, I use that same flick button to activate my sleep scene, which turns off all the lights and turns the air purifier to 25% or sleep mode. I find the setup works really well for me and it means I never have to manually adjust it. If you regularly keep windows open, you can also use a door and window sensor to start or stop purifying the air as they open or close. But wait, there's more. What about fixing air quality issues as they happen? Unfortunately, the Maris air purifier doesn't include an air quality sensor. That would be really nice if it did. I've reviewed several air quality sensors on this channel. Two of them I've mentioned, and that's Eve Room, which had thread support added just last winter. And the other is the Qingping Air Quality Monitor Light, which measures particulate matter as well as CO2. Another option is a car's TVOC monitor. If you have an Acara Hub, then this is an affordable option that's worked well for me. I'll link these reviews in the description as they think they're great sensors to keep around the house. Things like cooking, cleaning, and off-gassing of new furniture and products can all cause air quality issues. The sensors I've mentioned can alert you of problems, but when it comes time to cleaning the air, it's great to have an air purifier. Since these are all HomeKit devices, it's easy to create an automation based on air quality. So when EVROOM detects air quality below fair, then my Maris air purifier will turn on high. Here's where it's not perfect though. Unfortunately, there really isn't a way to return to the previous speed once the air quality has improved. I've created an automation that turns my air purifier to low once air quality has improved back to excellent, and this has worked well for me. I've also set up similar automations with PM2.5 and PM10 concentration using my Qingping device. One thing I want to point out is that like most air purifiers, this won't reduce CO2. So even though I can measure CO2 levels with my Qingping sensor, running the air purifier won't help reduce CO2 levels. Instead, you're better to open windows or increase the ventilation. There are also supposed to be some plants out there that are quite effective in cleaning CO2. If you're a plant lover, feel free to drop a comment and let us all know. I'm talking to you, Chris Young at HomeKit Geek. The Maris Air Purifier is one option for HomeKit users, and based on my experience, it's a good one. Though it's not the only option. As you can see, there are a few options that work with HomeKit, each with different coverage areas and costs. Maris is one of the more affordable options, and from my experience, it's a brand I trust. The only real downside is that there isn't a built-in air quality monitor. The other option is using a non-smart air purifier and adding a smart plug. You just need to make sure that the air purifier will turn on when powered. The Maris air purifier currently sells on Amazon.com for $99.99 and does ship to Canada for my fellow Canadians. I would love to see this eventually come to Amazon.ca as well. This can also be purchased on the Maris online store for $139.99 US. Filters last three to six months and they're available on amazon.ca for $40 or just $25 on amazon.com and can also be purchased for a similar price on the Maris online store. As always, I'll have affiliate links in the description that you can use to purchase either the air purifier or the filters. If you have any questions or you wanna see me test or compare this with another air purifier in the future, then let me know. 
Your feedback and the kind of content that you want to see helps me to plan out my future videos and that'll hopefully help you improve your smart home. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.